Hello, plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I like to take science and apply it to all things plants. And today's video is reserved for a select few people. Those are the people that bought the official plant sensors that came out. So if you're not in the know, we have a plant sensor and by we, I mean a different company I'm a part of called Earth One. I'm the plant science brain behind it. Um, and then there is people much smarter than me when it comes to electronics, dealing with all the electronics and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go over what I like, what I don't like, um, and some new features we're going to be coming out with very soon and all that fun stuff. But first, if you signed up for the beta project, it's too late to sign up now. If you go on the website, it will, it will show you um, basically that everything's back ordered and you can line yourself up for the official self-ready product. But if you joined that first beta, you received a plant sensor that looks something like this. Um, the lens may have come a little bit clouded. I know mine did. The lens in some may just not be attached, which also happened with this one. Um, and that's normal. So what we're doing is this one is a temporary sensor that you guys are getting and we're looking for feedback on what you like and what you do not like about this. So we can make decisions on what sensors we're going to change, which sensors we're going to drop, improve, keep, and that sort of thing. So it's not a pretty product yet. The final product is going to be much smaller and have a better equipment in it ultimately. And with that being said, if you sign up for the beta, you get the shelf ready product for free. Where this is, you can keep the old one and you can continue to use the old one if it works well for you, but you are getting like a final product version of it once it's ready to go to the shelf. So that's kind of cool. In the end, you, you may end up with, you know, extra dudes you may or may not want to keep. So this is what the final product looks like. And because you're in the beta, we are expecting your nasty grounds, basically. We want you to email us, tell us what you like, what you do not like uh, for both the app and the sensor itself. It only helps us. And many of you have sent feedback. And so because of that, we've been able to already start refining some things um, and making it easier. So one thing I personally had a heck of a time twice, I had a heck of a time twice with both of these sensors I had an issue with. I could not, for the life of me, get it hooked up to Wi-Fi. Now, what I did find out is that this is going to be the new way of doing this kind of AI tech on in your house. My Roomba, we just bought a Roomba that's like Wi-Fi, whatever. And it had the same technology where I had to like set it up to the Wi-Fi. Couldn't get that to work either. Apparently this is the new way of doing things. It's not Bluetooth anymore. And so because of that, uh, what, oh my goodness. One thing you may need to do to get this to work on what has worked both times. I just forgot it the second time when I did go to set up the second dude to that uh, the guy sent me was you should reset it. So the way to reset it is actually to turn it off. So you're gonna click it once, no light's gonna come on. And then you're going to click it again, a light's gonna come on, and then you're going to click it again. And you're gonna repeat that process 10 times. You can do 12 times just to really make sure you hit 10. You can't do it too many. Um, and that will actually reset the dude and allow you to then properly set up the Wi-Fi. Another problem that a friend of mine actually ran into, she bought a dude and she has a Samsung phone. I'm not a phone person. I literally just get whatever's like the zero dollar model uh, at the store. But she had a Samsung something and the actual app was glitching out on her. All you need to do is email us and we find out what, we have like testing software where we test the app in that software, figure out what's glitching do a patch for it and Encore is super quick at this. I think he got it ready for her in like less than six hours. And essentially you just go, you know, a download the updated version of the app and you're good to go. Your your app will be fixed. So if you're running into issues with that, again, let us know because we can fix it. So I'd like to know your guys' feedback in the comments about the shape and the design. Like I said, the shelf ready version and the version that the beta guys are going to get the final version is going to be much smaller than this but there was so many different options for this headpiece and ultimately this is kind of the one we decided on was kind of like this hexagonal or what was this octagon how many says i'm not for octagon it's an octagon uh 
kind of this is the the size we just or the the type we decided on there was like flower ones which we kind of thought was obnoxious there was circular ones and that sort of thing but we do need to keep this kind of dome shaped lens because it does allow the lights to come in um so sensor wise the soil sensors so things like soil moisture not ph ph is actually an add-on plug-in that would go into the port here that will be like a whole separate video when that's ready to go but the soil moisture uh that sort of thing is all done through this sensor here and then moisture sensors light sensors uh temperature temperatures are all, all ambient uh sensors and those are actually located in this head portion here um my one that the tops fell off on I might be actually able to show, I'll insert some footage of like a closer up that doesn't have glare as to what this looks like, but that's essentially where your sensors are located. One thing we don't like is the light sensor. So light sensor is not ideal. We don't like how when you have it in one specific position, it doesn't necessarily capture light as like a 360 effect, if that makes sense. So we're actually already upgrading uh, the lighting. The one thing in the app, and so I'll do actually a separate video on just light in general I want to do, but in the app it's showing Lux and that was partly my fault so the the lux side of things i'm a nerd so i'm like yeah i want to see lux but lux to your average user doesn't mean anything uh so we're actually going to change that so that it shows you know bright bright indirect and we're going to use verbiage using the ranges of data that your sensor is submitting to us. Temperature and ambient humidity is huge because those are sensed separately. And then we have an algorithm that will put them together to determine your VPD. Now that's a whole separate video onto itself as well. VPD is the way to grow plants. It is something that people in the house plant community do not often talk about, but it is very important and it is a make it or break it for rapid growth in your plant itself. So that one I literally was addicted to when I got my first sensor. This was before you guys probably got your sensors and my VPD was not ideal. So I was sitting in this room adjusting my humidifiers, um, adjusting my temperature, shutting the blinds, opening the blinds, trying to figure out like where to get everything ideal because I know how key that is to getting, you know, very rapid growth. And so a great example actually is this ginormous plant. So I've showed you guys this uh, one in the past and I normally can't keep that many leaves on my alocasia because I do not have high humidity in my house. My VPD is not ideal. Uh, and so since I got this and I started adjusting my VPD for a different plant, my other plants have decided to just go absolutely crazy. And one of them is actually this alocasia uh, that's grown in Lekka. So it doesn't just benefit the plant. It's located in it actually benefits all plants in the room because it's going to make you adjust factors that are ambient meaning control the space as a whole which is actually very very cool and this here is a great example of that so besides the light sensor another sensor that we're actually going to be changing is the moisture sensor so when i got the first one i this one has like a very old version of the moisture sensor and the ones that you guys got actually is an upgraded version of the moisture sensor so my moisture sensor was not working 110%. And so the new ones work a little bit better than what the old one did. Um, the one that you have works a little bit older than version one, but it's still not ideal. So in the meantime, to sense moisture correctly, when you go to water, you're gonna wanna pull your sensor out and give it a wipe and then place the sensor back in. If you want to continue to get very accurate results once every three days or so, you're going to want to go in and again, wipe that sensor off and then place it into your soil. Uh, that's just a slight issue we're having. Now we're modifying this sensor completely. The design of this is going to look totally different. It's, you know, probably going to look like a fork, to be honest, because the fork style is going to let us you know, control more factors and get a more accurate reading from that. So that is something to keep in mind is that that is going to change. But if you want this beta version to work 110%, give that sensor a little bit of a wipe when you go to water and you should be good to go.
like I said, shelf ready product. You're not gonna have to do the wipe. Um, you're not going to have to do anything. It's just gonna be leave it and forget it. It's just this one to make it work. That's what you have to do. And we didn't know this was an issue until like way after. And we actually started really using these long term and we're like, hmm. Yeah, something's not 110% right there. So that was something that we didn't even realize was an issue until way later down the road. So charging this is super simple. The port is on the side and this is the part where I wish I would have listened in meetings. I think this is called a USB-C. It is not an iPhone anything. It is like the old school version of a charger and you just pop it in. You can use any of them, just grab it from a gas station, Amazon, whatever. And then you just plug this into the wall and you give it a charge. So when we go to charge this, it takes around four hours. I usually just leave mine plugged in overnight because sensing wise, I don't really care about my 12 or so hours where it's dark it doesn't really matter to me so I will charge this at night usually but it only needs a four hour charge so it's relatively quick um, and then you just simply pop it back in the soil give that moisture sensor a wipe definitely when you go to charge and you should be good to go once it, to know it's fully charged it's going to give you a green light so it'll be that bright light that's usually orange is going to be green and that's you know, a sign that it's ready to go. So one thing that we have also realized is that there's a little bit of a battery issue. So on the app, it's showing that it's a low battery or no battery, but it actually still has some charge left. So you can actually leave the dupe past when that battery symbol is showing low. And the reality is, is that you can actually leave it until the data stops reporting. So when you notice that your data timestamp is not uploading and it's showing a timestamp from, you know, way before, that's a sign that it actually truly is dead. So that is something to keep in mind. If you're like, holy man, I have to charge this every two days. It shouldn't be that bad. Um, just wait until it stops reporting back to you and that's a sign that it's truly dead again another thing we're going to fix in the final product that you guys are going to get so one thing you also will notice is when you go to refresh it'll only refresh uh, i think it's like every 15 minutes if you don't have the paid version so there is a paid version where you can get faster refreshes and the only reason we're doing that is Basically, it costs money, it's my understanding. Um, so for us to like get your data to us, it costs us a little bit of money, but we're willing to kind of fork that out. But for you to get more rapid updates, the machine, the computer, I'm terrible at explaining this sort of stuff. Basically, whatever's sending that data around or pulling the data, sending it to a server, and then sending it back to you, costs money. <laughs> so all we're doing is getting, if you want faster updates, is essentially you guys would pay Pay for it and then that's how it would work without making a profit off of that by any means um, but that is something to keep in mind it's just it's faster updates is what it comes down to I just use like the regular version but I could see like when you first get the app how you can get very obsessive over this it's like a little game um so yeah you may want to get that if you're obsessive compulsive such as myself if you do have any questions you can email us the, at the earth one email it essentially goes to everyone in the company they're by company i mean there's not a ton of us but it gets sent to everybody and then from there we pick up the tickets as needed depending on what the question is um and then you can also actually submit a ticket which i think is the more useful of the two to us uh, someone in earth one may correct me on that but that's because it actually allows us to track what the issue was how many people are having that issue and so we can like send in the fixes for it or do the fixes for it accordingly. So yeah, other than that, I know this is not like 110% pretty and nice looking, but it's literally because we just wanted to get the sensors out to you guys so that we could see like what these sensors do and how they work uh, before sending you that final product. And we already know a little bit about what needs to be fixed just from our own personal use so far. If you're having troubles getting this set up to Wi-Fi, because that's something I have an issue with, one of the guys will Will help you it's not gonna be me because I'm not good at this stuff what if the guys will help you they have been spending hours on the phone or video chat um, just walking people through this so do not be shy they do not bite they're very kind so just feel free to reach out if you're having any issues with that if you have any questions about what the different values mean um, how they work that sort of thing throw them in actually in the comments down below because it's gonna help me 
for the videos I'm going to make in the future about those very specific topics and allow me to answer them accordingly based on what you guys need. So that is something to keep in mind. But overall, I'm actually pretty stoked about this so far. I really like the graphs. I find them incredibly addicting, to be totally honest. Uh, being able to adjust my light accordingly, being able to adjust my ambient moisture, my temperatures, and making my BPD perfect. It's almost like a game, but platform, real life platform for me, um, which is very cool. I like the future of where some of this stuff is going and just like how intelligent this will end up becoming, which is huge. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's like a real like real life farming simulator, but for plant people, it's the coolest thing. It's the coolest thing because you literally see like the light or the moisture, or the soil moisture going up or down and you're like, oh, gotta do this, gotta do that, gotta do, it's literally like a game to me which I love because who doesn't want Farm Simulator in real life? Come on, everyone wants Farm Simulator in real life. There is a survey that Annie put together. He's one of our group people. Um, if you wanna check out what that survey is, then I will leave a link for that down below. The top five people, um, there's gonna be five people selected from that survey. The feedback and the value of the feedback you put into the survey is huge because it's going to help us enormously with just like the future of this product in general. So if you fill that out, we're selecting five people from that to go on a video call with myself and the group to talk about, you know, everything, everything. You can vent all your issues, you name it. Do not be shy about ripping us a new one. We want you to do that actually, because again, it helps us. We don't want straight praise and we won't select, you know, the five nicest people. We're just going to randomly select five. So um, if you want to be on a phone call with myself and a whole bunch of uh, really uh, smart people that are not me because I am not a tech person, but those people are tech people. Uh, we want you to fill out that survey so we can get a hold of you guys somehow, some way to get you on that call. So plus you'll get to, you know, spend time with me. I don't know how much time it's probably going to be, you know, an hour or two because it's going to be intense, but regardless, it'll be fun. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any other questions about this, like I said, email that support email. Do not comment down below because I'm not going to be able to answer it. If it's anything tech or app issue, I will not be able to answer it. But if you do want to comment down below what each sensor is and how to read the data on the sensor, if you're like, I don't know why my value is this, how do I change it? That I can answer. That I can answer. But if you're asking me like app this thing, don't because I'm not gonna be able to help you. You have to email that support email because literally every question or email I've gotten about that, I literally just forward it to the guys because I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. I, like I said, had multiple phone calls with the guys just to help me get this thing set up because I am that tech illiterate. So put that into perspective. Anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye.